We start off this week with Mark Polk from RV Education 101 as he shows us the seven safety checks you should do before hitting the road. Then we begin our series on women in RVing as we visit with Susan Carpenter and learn all about her career and rise within the RV industry. And as we celebrate our 11th year of rolling on TV, we are also celebrating 10 years of broadcasting with Cox Sports Television. We'll join Michelle Fontaine as she visits our broadcast partners in Louisiana. Later, we'll introduce you to Dr. Marissa Fitzpatrick, also known as Dr. Fitz, as we start a new weekly series called Pause On Board. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Forest River. Follow the river. Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. Today I want to talk about my top seven RV safety checks you should make before each RV trip. But let's start by asking, are RVs safe in general? When an RV is manufactured, it will have an oval-shaped RVIA seal displayed on the exterior next to the entrance door. This seal means the RV manufacturer complies with more than 500 safety requirements regarding electrical, plumbing, heating, and fire and life safety. These safety requirements are established under the American National Standards Institute Standard for Recreation Vehicles. This should put to rest any concerns you have about the RV itself being safe when it is manufactured. Now let's go over my top seven safety checks to make prior to leaving on an RV trip. For starters, it's important you educate yourself on all the systems, appliances, and safety features on an RV and how to use the RV safely and effectively. There are probably 20 RV safety items we could discuss, but these are in no order the ones I feel should be checked prior to hitting the road. Number one, always complete a pre-trip checklist before you head out on the road. Simple checks like checking your tires, lights, fluid levels, hitch setup, all contribute to a safer RV trip. You should make these checks every day before traveling in your RV. I find it easier if you have these checks in the form of a checklist so nothing is overlooked or forgotten. Number two, take care of your RV's tires and they will take care of you. When you are not using your RV, keep the tires covered to protect them from the damaging effects of ozone in the air and UV rays from the sun. Invest in a quality tire inflation pressure gauge and check the tire pressure in all tires every time you use the RV. Check and adjust the pressure when the tires are cold before moving the RV. Maintain the pressure recommended by the manufacturer based on weights. Consult your owner's manual for proper tire inflation and never exceed the maximum pressure located on the tire sidewalls. Number three, LP gas leak detector. I recommend you familiarize yourself with the odorant added to LP gas to assist you in detecting a leak. The next time you go to have the LP gas cylinders or LP tank refilled, ask the attendant to let you smell the gas. Test the LP gas leak detector for proper operation. Check the expiration date on the detector and replace it when it expires. I write the expiration date on the cover as a quick reminder. It is not recommended you travel with the LP gas turned on. If you do have the gas on while traveling, turn off each individual pilot light, appliance, and the main gas supply before refueling. Number four, the carbon monoxide detector. Carbon monoxide is called the silent killer because you cannot see it, smell it, or taste it. Test the carbon monoxide detector for proper operation every time you use the RV. Check the expiration date of the CO detector and replace it when it expires. Again, I write the expiration date on the cover as a quick reminder. Know what the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning are. Dizziness, vomiting, nausea, muscular twitching, intense headache, throbbing in the temples, weakness and sleepiness, inability to think coherently. If you or anyone else experiences any of these symptoms, get to fresh air immediately. If the symptoms persist, seek medical attention immediately. If you are running the generator, shut it down and do not operate it again until it is inspected and repaired by a professional. Number five, 
smoke alarm. In less than 30 seconds, a small flame can turn into a major fire, and within a minute, the RV can be filled completely with smoke. RVs come equipped with a smoke detector. Test the smoke detector for proper operation. Instruct everybody in the RV on what your emergency escape plan is in the event of a fire. RV 101 tip. If you hear a chirping noise coming from any detector, the battery is dying and needs to be replaced. If you remove dry cell batteries during storage, replace them with new batteries the following spring. Number six, fire extinguishers. New RVs are required to have a fire extinguisher near the entry door. If you do not have a fire extinguisher, purchase an ABC rated fire extinguisher for your RV. I keep one inside the RV, one outside in the storage compartment I can easily access, and one in the tow vehicle if it's not a motorized RV. Inspect the fire extinguisher before each trip. Look to see if the arrow is pointing in the green area in the sight gauge. If it reads empty or needs charging, replace it or have it recharged immediately. Inspect all components of the extinguisher and make sure it is in proper operating condition. Inspect the safety pin, trigger, sight gauge indicator, hose or nozzle, tank, and labeling. Every month you should turn dry powder extinguishers upside down, tap on the bottom of the extinguisher and shake it so the powder settled on the bottom is released. If the powder is packed in the bottom of the extinguisher, it may not discharge properly or at all when you need it. Number seven, hitch components for a trailer or a towed vehicle. If you are towing a three or four ton travel trailer or towing a vehicle behind a motorhome, you need to understand the importance of inspecting the hitch components prior to each trip. Check all the hitch components on a trailer and on vehicles being towed behind a motorhome. It's easy to forget a step when you install hitch components, so I recommend using a checklist and double checking your work prior to leaving. Inspect the hitch components and or tow bar for any loose or missing hardware. Check the nuts and bolts for secure mounting. Inspect the hitch receiver for cracks or breaks in welds and loose nuts and bolts. Do not use any defective hitch components until repairs are made. Verify the hitch ball is the correct size for the coupler. Check the latch for secure mounting and that it is secured with a lock or safety pin. When everything is securely fastened, perform a brake check. Pull the vehicle forward slightly and tap the brakes. You should feel the trailer brakes or dinghy brakes engage and slow the vehicle down. In addition to these safety checks, I recommend you keep an emergency roadside kit in the RV. A few simple items can get you out of a jam and assist you in staying safe until help arrives in the event you break down. I mentioned earlier there are many other safety concerns involved with owning and operating an RV, but these seven can keep you safe and let you enjoy all your RV trips. For more information on using and maintaining your RV, visit RVOnlineTraining.com. Happy camping. Aquacam Tossins, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. I am the aftermarket manager. I run the aftermarket division for B&B Molders. We're an injection molding company, and I've been here two years now. I started off in a family business, um, spent 25 years there, worked my way up from the bottom right up to the very top and then I realized I wasn't challenged enough and it was time to move on to something else. So I decided to spread my wings and, and go into a different part of the industry and that's where I landed here at B&B Molders. I've been here for two years and the challenges have been great and it's been a really rewarding career here so far. 
So at b, b Molders, if you took your RV and you took a 360 on the outside of it, you would see a lot of b, &B Molder products. Everywhere from you'd see your awning gutter spout, you'd see your water management system, you'd see your electrical cable hatches, you would then walk inside your RV, you would see some ceiling cool vents, you would see some floor registers. We really do have a touch in every aspect of your RV. One of the things that makes me very prideful of B&B &B Molders is the amount of women that we have working here. We outnumber the men. We're, we're kind of that unicorn in the industry that I would say we're, we're at least 80 to 20 percent. And you don't find that very often. And you also find diversity and inclusion here too. So all walks of life, race, color, creed, you name it, b and employs it. So the, I would say we're the role model of what we're trying to create out there. When I started in this industry, it was incredible to walk onto a show floor and be one of the very few women that were there. Um, and through my journey, it's been incredible, the growth that we've had through the 25 years. Now you'll walk onto a show floor or into a company, you'll see much more women there. We're still not quite there yet. We're still about 20% below the national average. So we're still what they consider male dominated, but these things don't happen overnight. RVWA was from inception actually created the idea was from a man it may be very surprising but it really was this guy was very forward-thinking his name was Frank Hugelmeyer he was president of RVIA at the time and he's seen a need in this industry for a woman's alliance um, it had been tried before but the timing wasn't quite right so he came to a bunch of us and said you know you guys should do this so that's really how the idea was born. And then we just got a group of women together and we sat down at a RVDA function and said, okay, we want to do this. What does it look like? What's the name? And let's get this rolling. The launch of RV Women's Alliance was actually in Salt Lake City um, two years ago. And it was a great event. Um, we had a great turnout, it was wonderful, and we started doing a lot of um, networking events at trade shows and things like that. And then COVID hit, and then we couldn't network anymore. So we had to kind of take a step back and say, okay, besides just networking, what else can the RV Women's Alliance do for its members? And that's when we decided we're going to flip an RV, and we called it Drab to Fab. And what that did is we brought members from around the country. We had over 80 volunteers so far from over 40 companies come and take this RV, strip it down, and is now rebuilding it. The RV Women's Alliance has over 1,200 members of over 400 companies nationwide, including Canada. That's very impressive considering we've only been around for two years, and it just goes to show you the need that this industry had for something like this. The future of the RV Women's Alliance is really bright because we have a lot of things coming down the pathway. And one of those is our industry specific jobs board called the RV Career Highway. And what that's going to do is it's going to be an RV specific jobs board where everybody in the RV industry can post jobs and also bring people from outside the RV industry looking to come into the industry because nobody wakes up one morning and say, oh, I want to work in the RV industry, right? But it's such an amazing place to work. And once you get here, you realize that and you never want to leave. So part of our job is to tell people why come here, why work here, why work in the RV industry. It's not just Elkhart, Indiana. It's the whole nation. There's dealerships, there's manufacturers, there's suppliers all across the country and Canada. The RV Women's Alliance has four pillars that we stand by. It's recruit, unite, inspire, and develop. We do not do anything if they do not fall within those four pillars. So some of the stuff that we want to be working on is education. We have um, programs coming down. We have a new education committee, which is going to have two times a year right now of in-person or virtual learning opportunities. Every Friday we have something called the Coffee Lunch and Learn where you can sit in during your hour of lunch or we record it so you can listen to it later. It's about personal development. It's about honing some of your skills. 
the, the subjects are all over the place, but they're all available for our membership free of charge. And that's something that we, we are very passionate about is bringing the educational piece to our members. I've had the honor and privilege to work with people through the draft to fab project and through the RV Women's Alliance to work with women in all different sectors. Everything from CEO, president, on down to the, the women that are on the shop floors, you know, putting walls up and wiring electrical on these RVs. And it's amazing the amount of talent and amount of different types of jobs that are available for every facet of any talent out there for women. So as you're making memories in your RV, I want you to stop and think about all the women that contributed to the memories you're making today. Everyone from the woman CEO to the woman line worker all had a part in it. And I'm incredibly proud to be a part of an industry where we can make this happen. From off the road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norco, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid and Norco refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. And now we're here at the CST studio with Jeff Brenner, executive producer, and Ashley Coleman, the programming coordinator. Or otherwise known as the programming guru. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff, we have been, Rolling On TV has been with CST since we started in 2010. And we're now the number one weekly RV television show in the country and have been right along. A good part of that is because of you. I, I thank you, but it, it's, a, it's a partnership. You know, we love the show. You know, Ashley, as you met earlier, airs it so many times during the time. And people just begin to know who you are. And down here, it's a different type of RVing family. And so it's just a great fit for us when we go, hey, this belongs in our outdoor block. And we're fishers and fishermen and hunters. Oh, yes. But they use campers all the time. So it's just a perfect marriage. Mm, I think we have to come down here and do more projects. What do you think? I think so. Get you down <laughs> here for an LSU football game or a Saints football game and see how we tailgate out of our trailers would be unbelievable. If you go down to the fishing areas, people will have trailers set up and that's where they will go, mm -hmm. spend the night, go fishing, come back, spend it more time, and that you have those communities as you get further down into the bayou. And now I'm going to do something embarrassing. Ashley, come into the beginning. Good. You're embarrassing her, not me. That's what I meant. Exactly. That's what I meant. Come in and see. And this young lady, Ashley Coleman, is very instrumental in getting our show actually out there, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. It's one of the better shows that we've aired on CST, and I absolutely love it, and it inspires me to want to become an RV. <laughs> we love that. And yes, Rolling On TV is recognizable here. We asked the bartender at Pat O'Brien's, and he went, rolling on! We asked the, we mentioned it to the KOA. We're staying at the New Orleans KOA. And she went, oh my goodness, rolling on! We know you, we know you. So the word is getting out there, and we really appreciate working with you both.
Wow, am I glad I used AquaCam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. AquaCam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Welcome to Roland on TV's Paws on Board. I'm Dr. Fitz. I'm a small animal veterinarian in mid-Michigan. My passion is owner education and providing general pet health information. I've lived in Michigan my whole life, so I'm a Michigander. I love the outdoors, I travel frequently, and I actually enjoy hiking and exploring national parks with my husband. Many of you that also enjoy the outdoors like to take your pets along for the ride. In fact, as many as 70% of RVers travel with their pets. With this series, Paws on Board, I hope to help you, as pet owners and RVers, travel safely and comfortably with your pets. In this first edition, we'll talk about the essential items that you should bring with you when traveling with your pet. First, you should bring any medications that your pet may be currently taking. Make sure that you have enough of the medication to last for your entire trip or make sure that you get a refill prior to leaving for your trip. Also, bring along any flea, tick, or heartworm prevention that your pet may be due for while you're traveling, potentially on a longer travel. You wanna make sure that your pet is all up to date and protected for while you're on your trip. Second, having a pet first aid kit with you is going to be essential. In a later segment, I'll detail some of the items that you should have in your pet first aid kit. There are some commercially available kits, but you can also make your own at home with some of the items that you see here. The items in the kit can actually help with minor issues you might encounter on the road. Some of the items can even be life-saving, especially if you're not near a veterinary clinic when you travel. Next, medical records are a helpful thing to have with you when you travel. You don't wanna bring just your vaccine records or even just the printed invoice, but make sure you have full written medical records. These will be helpful, especially if you have records from the past six to 12 months or so. These can be really helpful for a vet if they're treating your pet for the first time when on the road. They'll have access to your pet's current medical history, preventive care history, and any current medications that your pet may be taking. This will definitely speed up any treatment that your pet might need, especially if it's an emergency situation. Next, this might sound like common sense, but having some form of identification on your pet is essential. You should have some form of your name and phone number securely attached to your pet's collar or harness. As a veterinarian, I also recommend having a permanent identification on your pet as well, and this would take the form of a microchip, and these can be applied by your veterinarian. Microchips are important because if your pet happens to slip their collar or harness and get away, if they're found by another person, they can scan that microchip and connect your pet back with you, and you can be reunited. Finally, you should always have a list of basic supplies that you need to bring with you for your pet so that you don't have to stop at Walmart when you're on vacation. First, having a collar, harness, and a non-retractable leash is important so that you have access to restrain your pet and keep them with you. Next, you should have extra water and bowls. Remember that your pet also needs to drink water when on the road, and make sure that you bring extra for if you're traveling and hiking and your pet is very active. You should also bring waste bags with you. Also might sound like common sense, but cleaning up after your pet is good etiquette. You wanna keep the campground and the trails clean for everyone's use. Finally, Having some towels and baby wipes are also essential if your pet gets in the mud, you go on the trails, or even if the campground is wet. Um, they can be really helpful to clean up your pet's paws. And even on some of the RVs, they also have spray features on the outside that you can clean up your pet before going back into the RV. For more information about traveling safely with your pets, visit RollinOnTV.com. Tune in next time for more pet health information. I'm Dr. Fitz. Thanks for watching Paws on Board. For additional information on anything featured on this week's show, along with additional stories, videos, and information about RVs, camping, and the RV lifestyle, along with the latest news and trends, be sure to visit our website at RollingOnTV.com. As usual, this has been another fun production. <laughs>